It's Sophia again with another video. This one is going to be about the appendix. If you haven't already, make sure to watch my first video, which is an overview of the major parts of the human abdomen and pelvis. This is the table of contents for today. First, we will go over what the appendix is and what a normal one looks like. Second, we will diagnose acute appendicitis. Uh, third, the treatment and complications. And finally, ruptured appendicitis. What is a normal appendix? It is a finger-like blind-ending tube that is connected to the cecum. This means that the appendix is attached to the right side of the cecum or large bowel. By the way, the cecum is a pouch that forms the beginning part of the large intestine. The length of the appendix is approximately nine centimeters and the diameter must be six millimeters or less. If the diameter is greater than six millimeters, it can be a sign of inflammation, which is ha hazardous to your health because it means that you have appendicitis. Though it is unknown what the true function of the appendix is, there are rumors that the appendix serves as a reservoir for beneficial bacteria. So after you may have diarrhea, the appendix reboots your digestive system so that you can feel better. In addition, the appendix contains tissue that transports the white blood cells required to fight infections. Here are some pictures. The first image is the CT axial view, meaning that the scanner is taking the images from top to bottom. The second image is a CT coronal view, which shows the body from front to back. In the CT coronal and axial view, we see the appendix right there as that little black dot. It's very tiny. And here. Sometimes it's difficult to spot the appendix because it can be so small, less than or equal to six millimeters in diameter. Usually you would be able to scroll to make it easier to tell where the colon is, but these in these images, it's kind of difficult. So just remember that the appendix is right here. This is a normal image of the appendix. Here are some more images. Now the appendix seems to look like a sausage and not a little dot. That is not a good thing. In the second image, it seems to be about 10 millimeters, which is definitely inflamed. This leads us to our next topic about acute appendicitis. Oh no, appendicitis. Appendicitis is inflammation of the appendix. One fun fact is that the suffix itis means inflammation. So pancreatitis is inflammation of the pancreas, Colitis is inflammation of the colon and any other thing with itis in it. To the right is an MRI image of the of appendicitis. It is very subtle, but that little dot is in fact the appendix. Who gets the appendicitis? Typically children and young adults. What are the symptoms? If you have appendicitis, you might experience pain around the belly button, otherwise known as umbilicus. This pain can then travel to McBurney's point, which is a point in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen. More symptoms may be fever, nausea, vomiting, and more. Why do people have appendicitis? Appendicitis happens when there is obstruction of the appendix tube with buildup of fluid. This leads to an infection and then blockage of blood flow, causing cells of the appendix to die. Another reason could be big lymph nodes in the intestines. Lymph nodes are little nodules that follow the arteries and vessels, helping with fighting off infections since they contain white blood cells. Infections cause lymph nodes to become bigger, for example, when you have a sore throat. So having large, enlarged lymph nodes in your intestines can block the appendix leading to appendicitis as well. Another reason could be that an appendiculus or stone in the appendix 
can block the appendix, but sometimes it doesn't really do anything and is just benign. The appendix is only taken out when the appendicolith causes inflammation. Furthermore, Crohn's or other rare diseases can also cause appendicitis. Crohn's is a rare genetic disorder that causes inflammation of the digestive system. Next, how do we diagnose appendicitis? We will go over how to diagnose appendicitis on a CT scan, on an MRI, and an ultrasound. First, a CT scan it is very specific and sensitive. You know, it, you know that it is appendicitis when the appendix's diameter is greater than six millimeters. If the wall or area around the appendix is greater than three millimeters or focal non-enhancement representing necrosis of the wall, meaning that the appendix doesn't have any blood flow. CTs are not recommended for pregnant women because of the radiation and dye, which can be harmful to a developing fetus. It is only good when diagnosing a life-threatening condition. Next is MRIs. MRIs are better for pregnant people to get a scan because it requires less radiation, but to diagnose, they show the same things as CT scans. Unlike CT scans, MRIs don't require contrast, otherwise known as dye, for pregnant women through IV. Finally, ultrasounds can be attempted in children, pregnant people, or young children, but if the appendix is not seen, it doesn't really help prove if the person is positive or negative for appendicitis. Now, here are some photos. First, an MRI scan looks like this. That little white dot is the appendix, and as you can see, it looks kind of inflamed. If we measured this, it would definitely be greater than six millimeters, so the person has appendicitis. Next is CT scans. The appendix here is the sausage-looking figure since this one is the axial view. See, here's the cecum, and at the end, when we keep on scrolling down, is the appendix, which is not supposed to be that big. Now we have more pictures. So, as you can see, the appendix is 12 millimeters, and that is way more than 6 millimeters. So, it is inflamed. The appendix is inflamed and the person does have appendicitis. Finally, we have ultrasound, which shows the appendix as this white line. The treatment. So the treatment for appendicitis can be a minimally invasive surgery called laparoscopic appendectomy. This is when the surgeon makes holes in your body and puts a camera in there where they can do the surgery through the hole. If it is too complicated, you would have a surgery called open appendectomy, which is another way to remove the appendix by opening your body up. For the surgery, a cutter incision is made in the lower right corner of the person's tummy. The abdominal cavity is then opened and the person's abdom abdominal muscles are separated. Then the appendix is cut out and tied off with stitches, as you can see in this photo. If you wait too long to cure your appendicitis, then you can get ruptured appendicitis, which is what I'm going to be talking about next. This is called pertinitis, which is inflammation of the pertineum, or the smooth membrane that covers the abdominal organs and lines the cavity of the abdomen. Pertinitis can be life-threatening and very painful. If pertinitis is not treated, the blood could become infected and the patient could become septic, which can be fatal. Here on the CT scan, you can see these two appendicolis as we scroll. Let's get to it. Right here. See, these are two appendicolis, which are white stones that are blocking the appendix from communicating with the bowel, causing the appendix to look like this giant sausage because it is inflamed. The fluid around um, it is this gray stuff that is fuzzy, unlike the fat on the left side, which is black because the appendicitis ruptured and the fluid is leaking out from it. 
Appendiceal abscess is a localized area of pus formed by ruptured appendicitis. Here we have an example. On the left of the screen, we see this mottled area or bubbly area that looks like poo poo, which is fluid and gas. If an area looks like poo, but is not in the bowel, then we have to worry that it may be an abscess. Here's an appendiculus and the abscess. See, that's the appendiculus. It's like a white dot in stone and the abscess, which is a ball of pus. Now on the right, we can see the appendix has burst with all of this air, which is very black. This is the appendix, which once looks like a tube, but now has an opening here because it is ruptured. So then it formed a pus ball. Once again, fluid and gas that is not in the bowel represents a pus ball or abscess, which is this fuzzy gray circle. Here are some videos to show the drainage. This patient had an appendectomy, but now there is a complication. Can you find it? Right there, there's fluid where there shouldn't be. So there's an abscess. But instead of going back to surgery, the patient can have a small drainage placed through a tiny hole in the skin, which is this white tube to drain the fluid so the patient can get better. This is the one this is one of the reasons why radiology is amazing. We can sometimes avoid big surgeries. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to watch the next video. Bye.